All content is publicly sourced and used under the USA Fair Use and UK Fair Dealing Guidelines. The things I say are strictly my opinion. Good afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are, everyone. It's the Busy Beat with the Royalty. Happy Monday, August the 24th. Boy, oh boy, I tell you what, I've been off today. I had a three-day weekend, not by choice. My manager cut our hours because of everything that's going on. And, you know, you're probably thinking, three-day weekend, that's great. Well, I have bills to pay. I'm a little disappointed about it, and I've told you all how I feel about my job. Been unhappy with it for a little while, but I have wonderful news. I had an interview this afternoon over the telephone, and it went very, very well. I'm very excited about it. The position would be in the same field that I work in now, the same type of uh, industry, but it would be a few steps above what I do right now, and it would be better pay. So I'm just praying, praying, praying. I said, if this is what you want for me, then let it be. If not, then not. But hopefully it is, because <laughs> it would be uh, such a great opportunity. Enough about that. This is Catherine, Queen of England, Catherine of Aragon's grave, the first wife of Henry the Eighth. Now, an interesting fact about this, from what I understand, I haven't looked this up, so if I'm wrong, which I probably am, forgive me, she, uh, the, the grave says Catherine, Queen of England now, but the current Queen's grandmother, Queen Mary, it did say Catherine of Aragon, because Henry wouldn't let it say Queen of England. She, Queen Mary, had it changed to say Queen of England, and she's finally titled as she properly should be. Oh my goodness, we got another stomach turn and tail in the adventures of the Harkles today. But three things that I'm grateful for, everyone. And look, Megan looks so grateful. She looks like she's given thanks in all of those. Doesn't she? Yes. Number one, Smegs was wearing gloves and didn't have to actually touch all those horrid, non-designer bags she and Halfwit were handing out at that charity drive through last week. Oh, thank goodness. Second thing I'm grateful for, I'm grateful that the photog that accompanied the Harkles to the charity event last week, I'm grateful so H&M can sell the pics and make a profit off their 10 minutes of work. Because what is the point of doing charity work if there's not something in it for you? And the last thing I'm thankful for, a relaxing weekend, and most of all, you, my viewers and subscribers. For today's Moment d'Histoire, I have Catherine of Aragon, the Queen Consort of Henry VIII. Oh, let's take a look at that coat of arms. I'm so sorry. I sped by that, didn't I? What is that? A, a, some kind of bird and a lion. Lovely. I do love a beautiful coat of arms. Her tenure as Queen Consort, 11th of June, 1509 to the 23rd of May, 1533. Catherine, Catherine was three years old when she was betrothed to Arthur, Prince of Wales, Henry VIII's older brother, heir apparent to the English throne. They married in 1501, but Arthur died five months later. And you all know that allegedly this marriage was never consummated. Although, they were both teenagers at the time, and tell me, what two teenagers are going to lay in bed next to each other for two months and not put their hands... Uh, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We were all teenagers once. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so... And besides that, uh, Arthur was saying after that, after their wedding night, that he spent time in Spain, and he didn't mean the country. And Catherine was from Spain. Y'all get where I'm going with this? Okay. She held the position of ambassador to the Aragonese crown to England in 1507, the first female ambassador in European history. She was banished by Henry so he could marry Anne Boleyn. After being banished from court by Henry, he gave her the title, title Dowager Princess of Wales. Wales which is the title she would have had if she never married Henry and would have been Arthur's widow because he was the Prince of Wales. She lived out the remainder of her life at, at Kimbolton Castle and died there on the 7th of January, 1536, of cancer. She was 50 years old. She's buried at Peterborough Cathedral. 
well, 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 well. What a strange turn of events that we have. I wanted to point something out that I noticed. Uh, somebody pointed this out to me, actually. And I wanted to share it with all of you. If you notice from these uh, pictures at this drive through charity uh, book bag handout, those, those bags don't say Dior. Look at that. She has to wear uh, gloves to touch them because they don't say Dior, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, or... Whatever. <laughs> anyway, the mask you see here and the shirt. Oh, my, my, my. Well, look. Exclusively on Megan's mirror, the mask that Megan is wearing. Megan wore a fun mask with both style and protection from the things going on at an event with Baby to Baby in L.A. in the summer of 2020. Click on the Shop Now link, or the Shop link that you see right up there. What do you get? A link to the Royal Jelly Harlem Mask. $15. I was asking my partner, how much do you think she makes off of each of those? He said the standard is 10%. So, a buck fifty, that'll go towards a, you know, that'll pay for about 0.00001% of a Botox injection. And then the shirt that she was wearing. A lovely Victoria Beckham front button fastening long sleeve button cuffed curved hemline. Wow, that is a mouthful for a white shirt with a collar. Here we go. $610. $610. Can you imagine spending that much on a shirt? I cannot. I am all aghast. I wish I had my grandmother's pearls so I could clutch them. Six hundred and ten dollars for a white shirt with a with a collar. Come on now, that that could pay. Uh, she could put that a little bit towards her mortgage payment, couldn't she? So what I want to share with you all today, Camilla offered Megan advice on dealing with the press. She also offered the same advice to Kate when Kate got married to William back in two thousand eleven. I want to say it was. And, of course, we all know Kate is perfect with the press. It's all lovely. It's all good. Excuse me, Duchess Catherine. Shouldn't call her Kate. More respect. But Megs, what does she do? She turns her nose at what Camilla tells her. Let's take a look. It's in the Express. I'll link it below. Oh, my goodness. You hear the dogs? Oh, shush. Camilla's aide speaks out after claims Meghan Markle ignored Help, she tries very hard. The Duchess ignored advice from the Duchess of Cornwall on how to survive life as a member of the royal family. It was claimed yesterday. Meghan, 39, that should say 47, was urged to ride out the storm by Camilla after she was invited to lunch before her marriage to Prince Harry. It was reported. Oh, these dogs... It is understood that Camilla had told Meghan that she would focus on the positives of her new role. Camilla is said to have described how she had been treated by the press following the death of Diana and how she had coped with the pressure amid waves of negative headlines. A friend of Meghan's told a Sunday newspaper she was very sensitive to Meghan and provided her with support, advising her to ride out the storm and that it, that it would pass, but ultimately Meghan didn't listen. <laughs> Meghan thinks she's had it bad by the press? The press committee... The press treated Camilla horribly, did they not? Yes, they absolutely did, okay? Last year, Meghan complained that she had received little support since moving to Britain, saying, Not many people have asked me if I'm okay. But Meghan's friend said Meg was really grateful to Camilla, who was very supportive, and invited her for private lunches, particularly around the time of the marriage. She listened to her and understood that it's really difficult joining the royal family from an otherwise normal life. Well, I would say the life that Meghan knew before 
joining the royal family was quite different from the life that Camilla knew before joining the royal family. I think Camilla's life was somewhat respectable compared to Meghan's. <laughs> Very respectable compared to Meghan's, let's be honest. And if Meghan was wise, she would listen to Camilla, would she not? Camilla knew you keep your mouth shut, you don't talk to the press. Camilla's never given an interview to the press. Could you imagine Camilla getting in front of the cameras and saying, nobody's asking me if I'm okay? If Camilla does talk to the press, now she talks about her charities, not about herself. William and Kate never talk about themselves. Could you imagine... There I go again. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge going on TV and saying people aren't asking them if they're okay? Uh, no, absolutely not. It's totally horse pucky. Come on now. Camilla was blamed for, by many for the breakdown of Charles's marriage after the death of Diana in 1997, and she received widespread criticism. When the Duchess of Cambridge married Prince William in 2013, Camilla is said to have taken Kate out to lunch to offer similar help and advice. A palace aide said the Duchess of Cornwall does understand what it's like to come from a normal life and then land in the completely extraordinary world that the royal family exists in. So she tries very hard to make people welcome and help them find their feet. Her offering to mentor and guide is something she really tries to do. That applies to many people, not just the Duchesses of Cambridge and Sussex. You know, Smegs would be wise to listen to Camilla and treat Camilla with respect, because Camilla has the ear of the money bag, doesn't she? Prince Charles. Prince Charles holds the purse strings, and Camilla holds Prince Charles, so therefore Camilla holds the the purse strings. If Meghan were as smart as some people give her credit for, she would realize Camilla is the one she really needs to, you know, be buttering up to. Or she needs to butter up. You get where I'm going with this, right? A few comments from the last video. Let's take a look. Poor little fake baby Archie. I know, I know, he's not real. But he's worried his way into my heart anyway. He's got that sweet, little, baby, plastic smile. Somehow less plastic and more genuine than his, um, mama's. Maybe it's a good thing that she's, that she forgets about him unless there's a photo op. I don't think I could stand seeing him peeking out of one of those designer doggy carrier's purses. Besides, Handbag Harry would be out of a job. Uh, handbag Harry still has a purpose. He his status is help him pay the bills. The pictures are, the pictures of Meghan really wouldn't be worth that much without the marriage to Harry. So he he does serve a purpose right now. Besides, Daddy Charles is having to help pay for the mortgage and pay for Doria to watch Archie as he sits and collects dust. Uh, no red carpet, no long gown, no showing off. Poor Megs, that's not what she wanted. She's so desperate for attention. Yes, but never, ever again will there be lineups to see her never again. Yes. She can get the same tiara the queen wears right on Amazon. Only 15 bucks. That's where I got mine. Then everyone will realize just how important she really is. Three cars? She must be exhausted. Talking about uh, at the charity event, Megan gave bags, to charity bags to three cars long enough to get her picture taken with each one, and then she took off back to her private jet, back to Oprah's neighborhood. Right. It's good to see the poor children in their parents' expensive new SUV will not go without paper and pencils this year. I'd send Smegs to become a charitable nun, but then she'd demand to be the Pope. Oh yes, she would go on a Zoom call and say, we have to shatter this glass ceiling. We have to have the first female Pope. It's a right. It's blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the same horse manure that she spouts everywhere else. Okay, next. No way Harry was... No way, I'm sorry. Harry. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. No way. Henry VIII was obese and disgusting and had certain ailments. 
but he'd be perfect for Megan. I'm in Michigan, but none of our gyms have opened up yet. What is Megan wearing? She looks like a bag lady. All the money she spends on clothes, and she goes out looking dirty and likes she doesn't own a brush. Good grief. They supposedly have a son. Why are they not home with him? Paparazzi is the duo's salary and income. Each click of the camera is no longer reminding him of his mother's death. Move over, Mother Teresa. There's a new saying in town. Nuts! <laughs> Nutmeg couldn't care less about anyone but herself. She's false and puts on a big act. If she puts on an act. Has she attended acting school? Did she get some talent as far as that goes since we last met? Hey, I've just thought, maybe Artificial will achieve the Hollywood stardom that has been denied to Smeg. He could have a part in the next Toy Story sequel. Alright, everyone. What have we learned today? Well, number one, Archie inspires the same affinity as a Barbie, G.I. Joe, or other action figure or doll. The second thing that we've learned the only red carpet at the charity event attended by the Harkles was the trail of hair that fell off of Harry's head while he was there. Number three. Smegs is insulted at the insinuation that she was exhausted after three cars. In her old profession, three cars was a slow night indeed. Number four. Megane could never be a nun because there is no one to sleep with to social climb. Number five. It is true, Henry VIII had certain ailments, but even he would not step foot inside Mooching Meg for fear of what he might contract. Number <clears throat> six. Excuse me. The Harkles are not home with Archie because he is safely put away on his stable level shelf. Number seven. Smegs has been good for Harry, whereas every camera click made him think of Diana. Now, every camera click makes him think of cash and merching opportunities. Number eight. Mother Teresa has allegedly said there are heaps of cow dong in Calcutta more worthy of adoration than Mrs. Harkle. Number nine, Mother Teresa was also allegedly heard to say that these piles of dung are more giving than Mrs. Harkle as well. The odor a pile of dung lets off is putrid and horrific. The odor Mrs. Harkle lets off is only putrid. Number 10. Oh, by the way, everyone, just to make it clear, Mother Teresa has been dead many years, so she didn't say those things. I just don't want to get anybody in the comments. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Number 10. Smex could not be putting on an act. It has been well established that she hasn't had the talent to act. Oh, I'm sorry. I messed that one up. Number 10. Smegs could not be putting on an act. It has been well established that she hasn't the talent to act. And the final thing that we've learned, number 11, drum roll please. Archie will achieve the Hollywood stardom Ms. Markle never could when he becomes a D-list character actor portraying plastic baby dolls in a variety of films from the lead role in the Chucky horror films to a fake prince in the Toy Story series. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit the notification button. I truly appreciate every single one of you so very much. And I hope that every one of you has a great evening. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.